Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York, and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Abel Dinanair has been seen in the following publications, Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. My wife is here today, Arlene. Hi, Arlene. Okay. Um, before we get started on our fantastic edition today, let us um, uh, thank our wonderful sponsors for Able Done On Air. Uh, Able Done On Air is uh, a television program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able, and um, also our podcast, uh, which is able to speak up, can be also. Uh, listen to on Spotify and Anchor FM, and uh, we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Muslim Media Corporation, and many others, including supporters such as uh, Yahad uh, of New York and New England, and uh, the uh, Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Uh, we would like to thank Washington County Mental Health today for this topic, which is the Imagination Station. Uh, we can go over that um, before we begin. The Imagination Station is a specific kind of sensory room known as a snoozling room, coined in the 1970s by two Dutch therapists. The Dutch hybrid word pronounced snoozelin, or snoozelin, tra directly translates as sniffing and dozing. But in practice, means something more like exploring and relaxing. The Imagination Station is the only snoozling room in Vermont, and the only hand, there's only a handful in New England. The most important part of the snoozling experience is not the equipment, but the control children have over it or adults. Most treatment for kids on the autism spectrum in, in it involves uh, helping them adjust to society's rules and expectations. But the snoozling room, in the snoozling room, kids get to create in the environment tailored specifically to them. Um, let's introduce our guest, Heather Slayton of Washington County Mental Health. Um, uh, what is your position for Washington County Mental Health? And thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So in this capacity, I am the facilitator for the Imagination Station Snoozlin Room. Mm -hmm. And I've worked for the agency for 19 years, and I have been facilitating the use of this room for the five years and two months that the room has been open. Okay. Um, what exactly, well, we said what Snoozlin Room is, but yeah. the well space now has the, sno the Snoozlin Room. So. Mm -hmm. What is the Susan Room in this case, and, and how does it work for uh, participants in Washington County? So the Snoozlin Room is a room that was brought to us by the Autism Puzzle Foundation of Vermont. And we were approached by them and Randy Lamberti 
when they decided to retire their foundation and they wanted to leave a lasting gift for the community and for people with autism. Mm -hmm. So they came to us and said we wanted to build something that the community could access mm -hmm. and that would last. And we gladly accepted that. The board and our executive director, Mary Moulton, said, yes, we want to house this space. Mm -hmm. And so they built with our maintenance department. So the room. autism, that autism society or that part of that organization does not exist anymore. Right. So they held a massive fundraiser, one last big bang, and worked with our maintenance department. And they built this amazing space. And so now anybody with autism can, whether they're a client of Washington County or not, can now access this space where they can go in and relax or come in and get stimulated if that's what they need and enjoy the space and control what goes on around them. When you say therapy and stimulation, um, what exactly does that mean for those that don't know? Like in terms of this case. Right, so the room gives you what you need you take away what you need from it. And so you can stimulate whatever sense you need. Mm -hmm. There are lights, there are sounds, there are things to touch, and all, just all kinds of things to explore. You can so was it like stimulate for, your smell. Mm -hmm. So example, mm -hmm. um, I'm just bringing it out there. A carnival mm -hmm. um, is a sensory space for kids and adults. Yes. So example, they have games in carnivals such as um, whack-a-mole, you know, you, you, you're taking the little thing and you're whacking the head, yeah. uh, you're right? Or they, they, you know, balloons that burst when you put wa a water gun or something like that. Similar, are those similar experience, well not, I wouldn't say carnival for, in a snoozling space, but is it? It can feel like one if you needed it to. Okay. So there are, you can control the lights. Mm -hmm. There are these amazing blocks that you can push or jump on if that's what you want to do that will change the lights in the entire room. Mm -hmm. um, there are bubble tubes that fish are in, plastic fish, that change, the lights change, the bubbles run through, everything moves. Um, there are, there's an aromatherapy machine. It all changes. What exactly is aromatherapy? So it's got essential oils in it, mm -hmm. and you can smother a spot on it that will make the air blow through, changes the entire scent of the room. There are vibrating cushions in the room. We now have a brand new zero gravity chair that has vibrating massage and heat. There are stereos. There's a computer program that casts pictures or music on the wall. Like, like holograms? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a... It's got a projector mm -hmm. that you can watch animals or a beach scene or snow or even or if somebody more wants to be if somebody wants to be on the moon. You, you can be on the moon. You can be you, in space. You, you can, can put a picture of the moon. Yep. Oh, cool. Or a ski mountain. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, many options. Anyone? Anything you want to ask? Yes. Um, how is this? How is this help someone with a disability? Like. Besides autism, is it just for autism? It's not. It's, it's a fully controllable space. Mm -hmm. If you can find a way to get what you want out of it, mm -hmm. you can go in and do it. Um, it's easily used by people with emotional disturbances or somebody with Alzheimer's. If there is a sense that you need stimulated, you can go in and do that. Okay. Um... Now, how long did it take Washington County Mental Health, or did it take you to actually turn, because I, I heard that it was a, off camera, I was told that it was a storage space. So it took a year, two years? Oh, it was, it was quite a long project. I can't actually remember the entire length of it from the time they approached us until it was finished but it did take quite a while we had uh there was a room where records were stored there was a room where i used to hold a job club we had a janitor's closet it was mm -hmm. there were quite a few rooms that were removed mm -hmm. to build this space definitely okay. now the wall space 
has other things going on, therapies and programs and stuff. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Sure. Well, space is kind of like a hub for the agency. Mm -hmm. You can go in there and find access to almost everything that the agency offers. We have an amazing state licensed kitchen upstairs. Mm -hmm. There is a gym in that building. We have obviously Imagination Station. Um, there is a food shelf for the consumers that we serve in there. We have our jobs program in there. Jobs which program, is, employment. It's an employment program for youth. Mm -hmm. um, we have counselors from a few different divisions mm -hmm. that use offices there. Mm -hmm. um, some other agencies use space mm -hmm. to meet with clients there because it's just so central to Washington County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of different folks in there. Okay. And our doula program is there as well. A doula is what? A doula is a pregnancy support mm -hmm. program that we have. Yeah. Okay. And art programs and, yeah, the learning mm -hmm. network is there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've had them on the show. Now, how does um, the snoozling compare to other therapies for people with autism? It is 100% that person driven. They choose everything that happens for them. It's not necessarily a suggestion by somebody else. If they want to spend the entire time enjoying the bubbles, mm -hmm. they can do that. If they want to spend 100% of their time watching this, there's one machine where the snow just flies around and the lights change inside that box, they can do that. If they just want to relax watching the stars above them on a vibrating pad, they can do that. It's 100% the experience they want it to be. Okay. Um, anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> take your time. Take your time. Is it free, not free? Is there a sliding scale? So it depends on the person who's using it. There, this, this room is not actually a program of Washington County. It is a room. And but so, it's under, I'm confused there. Okay, I'm so. I'm sorry, it's under Washington County. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not debating here. I'm just. Right, right. It's under Washington County. So we're, we're, how, can you alleviate that confusion with this? I hope so. So it lives in a Washington County building. It was donated to Washington County. It does not have any funding. It is a room, not a program. Ah. It is run 100% on donations. Ah. And so we do fundraising. But in order to keep every element in that room in good working condition, we do have to charge a small fee for use. However, if anybody needs to use that room but cannot afford it, we find a way to make sure they can use the room. We do fundraising to make sure that everybody can have access. What is it like? Ten dollars? It's ten bucks for an hour. Oh wow. And if somebody cannot afford that ten dollars, we make sure they can still use it. Okay. Okay. So we do fundraising. And having to do fun it. for ten dollars and that's the best carnival because Vermont doesn't have a amusement park. Right. <laughs> Right. So, yeah. And, you know, we tried to keep it as reasonable as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we actually sell memberships mm -hmm. to many school districts have memberships. Outside agencies have memberships. And that's where a lot of the money comes from to help provide maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we're able to give a lot of families that can't afford it. Now, now is it just access. for show? Okay, now. Here's another confusion. Is it adults? Thank you. Is it an adult and children or just children? There is no age limit. Anybody that needs to use that room is the perfect age to use that room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Now, uh, so it can be, um, what about, um, uh, so any from like one and up or zero, because, or that, or that preschool age and up can they use? So anybody 
typically anybody with a diagnosis of oh, autism. Of autism, yeah. Right. Although anybody that's got an emotional disturbance, or we like to say anybody with a need. Mm -hmm. So if... An emotional disturbance can mean like... It could mean a, a lot of things. A crisis. If someone's going into a mental health crisis, anxiety, right. example. Yes. Yep. And we don't ask for proof. We don't say bring us your a diagnosis or a prescription for it. If you have a need, you have a need. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, within the 19 years that you've been working for Washington County, is your uh, uh, experience in therapy, or how, how, does, how did you come across doing this? So, no, it's not. I started... I'm sorry, but... Oh, no. Don't be. I started 19 years ago doing direct support work with people with autism. Mm -hmm. and, Working in group homes? Or um, group no, houses. just one-on-one -on -one direct work with, in the community with people with autism. Uh, direct support, correct? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And loved it. And then I went into working in mental health mm -hmm. and doing employment support. And I've done some case management. I now do fundraising, mm -hmm. and I went into working in this room when it first started because my husband and I had adopted a couple kiddos with autism, mm -hmm. and I just really loved that this room was happening, that we were getting this room, and I was just so invested in having mm -hmm. somewhere to bring my kids that was just something so wonderful for the whole autism community that... I was just so excited about now, it that I was like, please the, let me do this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> that was, I was just Now, happy. what is the misconceptions around people with autism <laughs> and now you bring mental health into the mix? So it, is there more uh, misconceptions around that, uh, mental health and autism or both? You know, personally, I think the biggest misconception is that that if you, that anybody with autism, with or without mental health, is anything like anybody else with autism. Mm -hmm. I think people think that if they know one person mm -hmm. with autism or a mental illness, that they know them all. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge misconception. Example? I think people think that they're all the same and none of them are. No one person is like any other person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true for all people. At one time? Yes. Yeah. So when you book this room for an hour, it's yours for the hour. Oh. So there, it's not like you have to share it with anybody. So if you want to, like, example, you mentioned music. So if you want to, like, uh, have, um, if, 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 if you want to, like, have your special kind of music that you listen to. Mm-hmm. For that hour, like, example, um, I don't know, like, um, disco, disco or, or, or like the Rocky tunes or something like that. Yeah. And you, you know, and you want to work out in that room to let off stress, like exercise aerobics and that kind of thing. You can do that. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you book that room, it's yours for the hour. That's it. You go Flash in. Flash dance. You do your. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You go in. You do your thing. It's yours. Okay. And if you go in there alone for the hour, it's yours. If you go in there and you would enjoy it more if you brought five of your friends, you do that. It's okay. yours for the hour. Okay. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I think we're gonna start go going there <laughs> um, now. But um, here's the thing. Um, now. Uh, is this, um, how can I put this? Um, so, are there snoozing rooms in, well, in New England, right? There's others, correct? There's one other. In northern New England, there's one in Rhode Island. In all the United States, there's none. This is the only? There are others in the United States. The only other one in northern New England is Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Now... The word snoozling, is that an international word? So obviously, is there 
internationally snoozling? Or there no? are. It, it's a Dutch word. Yeah. There are others. The other closest to us is in Toronto. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So it's and, pretty exclusive around here. But Canada, now, during coronavirus, how is the snoozling room working? I mean, obviously. We were you, full the whole time. Full the whole time. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, we never had to close, and I'll tell you why. Because it was already a naturally embedded thing that everybody who uses that room has to clean it before they leave, mm -hmm. and because it's only used by one person or group at a time. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by cleaning? Like you have, sanitation? You yeah, to... like it's like going to a gym. You book your hour, you go in and use the room, and you clean everything before you leave. Mm. That was already a naturally occurring So you occurring sanitize thing. the whole room? Yep. Oh. Every time you use it. And that was already a normal practice. Mm -hmm. So we never had to close. Ah, okay. So it just stayed open, which was wonderful because for so many people to use the room, everything else in their life had changed so much and so few people could understand why, mm -hmm. that this is the one thing that remained the same for them, that everybody just kept coming. Okay. Now, um, in terms of, you raised money for yes. this. We can mention that. Um, and you went above and beyond, per, from what I heard. <laughs> heard. What was raised, and... And if you can explain the matching fund, mm -hmm. or, or what a matching fund is for those that don't know. So we just had, yeah, very successful fundraiser. Um, I had a lot of help. So it, we recently celebrated our fifth year anniversary, mm -hmm. and we did an internal fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And internally, we raised just about $5,000. And yeah, it was a nice one. And um, I thought, well, not, it the, wasn't twenty three. You said well, 20. our just our internal employees and some letters that we sent out to local businesses. We raised five. K and W Tire of Berlin matched it, mm -hmm. and then we received a grant from the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for autism. Doug Flutie, the football player. Yes, for seven hundred and fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and then an anonymous donor. Through K and W Tire, wow. sent us an additional fifteen thousand, and that brought us to twenty three thousand four hundred and twenty nine dollars and ten cents. Okay. For that was our total. I, you've never met Doug Flutie. You just got the. No, they were offering a chance at a grant, and so I nominated the room. They were offering nominations for people who did, you know outstanding work during the pandemic at offering outlets or you know services mm. during the shutdown and I said we didn't shut down so I nominated the room for staying open mm -hmm. and we won a grant so okay. I'm glad we glad we got in on that action now according to um, the website um, it says here maybe you can bringing this in, into light. Um, it, the snooze learning experience is, is not the equipment, but the control children have over it. Yes. So what exactly is, that, is meant by that sentence? Right. So there is some amazing equipment in the room, like the zero gravity massage chair and mm. the bubble tubes and the vibrating things and the smelly things. But because the people using the room get to choose what they want, and they can choose the intensity of the vibration or they can choose the sense because they have total control over the room. They change the colors. They choose the sounds. They can shut off or turn on the lights. That having control and understanding that they're making the thing happen is empowering. And that is really what makes that experience. Now, um, um, it says here... Snoozling translates to sniffing and dozing. Now, in terms of um, smell, sense of smell, mm -hmm. um, some people like to eat good food. Mm -hmm. 
do you have in the room a situation where aromas, like if somebody, okay, I'm hungry, you know, um, that kind of thing. Can they bring, can you cook in the room? Can you do some kind of thing with food or no. recipes or... Unfortunately, no. One of the one of the only really steadfast rules in the room is that no food or drink is allowed, and that's because there's no funding, and so we really can't afford to clean up big messes. Mm. And so we try to keep anything that will be super damaging out of there. So so no, so no aromas. Food or drink. So. so. So the aromatherapy is nice, but you can't be staining or spilling no, stuff. No, aromas <laughs> of food, I meant, like... Oh, well, you can put any smell you want in the aromatherapy machine, but we can't okay. be cooking. <laughs> no. Oh, so no barbecue grill smell? No. Or, well, or... you could put... A, if you can find an essential oil of that, you could put it like in the machine. <laughs> charcoal smelling hamburgers... Sounds, if you can find that in an aromatherapy, you could put it in the machine. Maybe we should talk. We should talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, no. That because different good. smells. Yeah. Um, I, I've worked with students with autism before, so different smells help them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Push pasta, eating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. And now, um, society... Um, you know, sometimes when they see, this goes back to misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they see people with autism and their mannerisms of like rocking back and forth mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, blurting out certain things or they might be dual diagnosed, mm -hmm. you know, with mental and physical. Um, how does therapy change that? Or help with that to not um, deal with the norm, you know, societies, you know, it, sometimes because years ago people with special needs used to be like institutionalized. Right. So uh, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Like how, how do society's norms change? Uh, uh, let me see if I can redo that question. I'm sorry. Um, uh, society, how does society change with the rules with stuff like this and as far as the um, do you understand what I'm saying? So one of, one of the reasons that a room like this wouldn't be funded is because mm. it's not something we can really measure outcomes for mm. and you know if you can't measure an outcome you're not going to get funding right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I will Am I wrong with the question? Or no I don't your question isn't wrong I just think that it's a hard thing to measure, mm -hmm. and this room doesn't really give us a way to measure an outcome for that. I will say that what I have seen, at least in my own kids, mm -hmm. when we've been there, um, they don't have a lot of those visual kind of stims, but I do see that when they leave, they're more relaxed after having been there, and what, I, what they do have for those obvious kind of things are mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. when they leave. I do see less of that stuff. And so if there was access to more of this kind of mechanism to relax, I think that people would be able to see less of that kind of stuff. So I think it would be a good way for people to mm -hmm. reduce those things. Any question you want to ask? Yeah, are there certain hours you can use this room? I'm uh, sorry, I didn't hear all of uh, it. I'm sorry. Any certain hours you can use the room. Yes. So our building's business hours, which I always have to look at because I'm not there the whole time. Um, we're open from 8 to 4.30, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. except on the holidays that the agency is closed. And no weekends. We're not open on weekends. Yeah. Um, I always say yet. And I always say that if, somebody can absolutely not access it during the week. Like if somebody really wants to go, but like mom or dad or the caregiver of whatever person works the same hours that we're open, mm -hmm. they can absolutely email me and I will find a way to meet them outside of business hours as often as possible. I do have a lot of kids at home. And so sometimes it's a little bit of, Finesse 
involved to try to find a time that will work for me and for the person who wants to go, mm -hmm. but I will work something out okay. because I know what it's like to be at work all week mm. and only be able to do things at night or on the weekend. Okay. So while we're not open, I will work something out. Okay. And my ad, my email is on that address. It's on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And it's on the first floor, so it is accessible. And it is ex handicap accessible, too, if someone's in a wheelchair. It is, yeah. It's right on the first floor. It's the, we've got double doors in the front door, and every door to the room is more than wide enough okay. for wheelchairs. Tell us about the history of Randy Lamberty and um, how you guys got to meet and mm -hmm. why he came up with the Snoozeland history. So, the Lamberti family is a local family. In, in Vermont. In Barrie. In Barrie. Yep. And they have a family member who has autism. Mm -hmm. And they formed the Autism Puzzle Foundation of Vermont. They saw how tough it was for families to access things that they needed for their family members. Mm -hmm. And so they formed this foundation to raise money to help people get access to the things that they needed. Mm -hmm. And so they did fundraisers, and people could come to them and apply for scholarships to get things that they needed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if your kid needed a, an adaptive bike, then they would apply for the money and... A tandem get, or something like that. Yeah, you know, or a trike or something. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Money for camps, money for adaptive equipment, whatever. And so they did that for 10 years. And then when um, Kay Lamberti, who was the grandmother of the family passed away they decided you know they'd done it for a very long time and they really just kind of wanted to wrap it up and go out with a big bang and this room was the big bang mm -hmm. and so they contracted with flag house who yeah was flag house international new jersey yeah they, the, they they have all kinds of um accessible like toys and different things yeah they have amazing equipment and i've, that I've is interviewed the company. them in new york so yeah. yeah i know them yeah and that's the company that installs the official snoozeland equipment mm. so, yeah yeah um small world because yeah. uh, people all these agencies flag house and, and you know you probably have do you have help from the autism society of america um we don't okay no but I am putting in a huge flag house order pretty soon with the money we just raised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To replace lots of broken things and to get some new things. So, yeah. Okay. Pretty excited. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so we have some time left. But um, so, what is the future of Snoozeland? It, it's going to stay around, correct? Our room? Yeah. Oh, yes. We'll continue to do fundraising to keep. You know, we have to maintain it, and we're always looking for new fun things. Um, there are some area people that like to help us. So mm -hmm. the Knights of Columbus has donated money for the what we call the Family Use Fund, so to help people access the room who maybe can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, they've donated money for that. The Rotary Club gave us an air purifier our very first year so that people who want to use it that don't like the aromatherapy can come in without smelling all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Air purifier um, just gives clean air to the... Yeah, it just cleans it up so it doesn't smell in between uses, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the There was a, a student at Barry City Elementary. He's now a Spalding student. He did a fundraiser for us a couple of years ago. Jack Touchette led some other students, did a fundraiser, bought us a ball pit. Um, well, baseball. No, a big ball pit, like huge... Big foam thing. No, I'm with, thinking baseball, like a, because uh, I've, I've been to like baseball fields and you can Oh, like, like a batting cage? Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. But no, it's a big, big bin full of balls that you can climb into and. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. So Like a raised, trampoline. But it's, almost, but it's just all balls. And then one year I did a fundraiser and we ended up with a check from the um, John LeClaire Foundation. I've heard of them. Yeah. And bought a swing for us so our building is a tire not, swing uh it's a it's a big like ot swing and so it's got a frame and it's got a seat that when you sit in it the sides kind of come in and hug you mm -hmm. it's so nice but our building isn't set up in a way that we could hang a swing mm -hmm. and so it's got a nice big frame and 
So lots of people want to help us. It's really nice. Mm, mm. So I like to, you know, thank those people. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> when we Any did... other questions? Not the moment, no. no. Okay, go ahead. So, you know, I like to thank people that help keep us going. So, you know, every, every now and then we send out a letter to the people that have memberships and to our clients that use the room most often and say, and what else would you like to see? And so we try to put out feelers, like what else would be useful in the room? What, what do we about video? Have? Well, okay. Um, question. I'm, I'm big on um, sensory stuff with videos. Mm -hmm. So like, so you have a projector. Yes. Okay. Um, that, what about showing, um, I don't know, like music videos in the space or in the snoozling room or some other kind of sensory videos. See, I have epilepsy, mm -hmm. okay? I can't, for, in terms of sensory, for me, I can't uh, watch a 3D uh, movie. Yeah. Or I can't go in, in an amusement park ride that has 3D stuff because, yeah. or flashing lights. Right. Now, does... The snoozling room have flashing lights and stuff like that, or no, yes or no? So, what I am told about the program that is in the computer, there is nothing in there that should cause seizures. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But can you show videos or stuff? So, or? yeah, the program that we have in there Do I try to does have videos, it has... Um, there are three categories in the program in the computer. Mm -hmm. There's a relaxation, an education, and a stimulation. So it's got music. It's got like American Bandstand. It's oh, got wow. stuff from other countries. It's got educational stuff. It's got some pretty amazing, amazing stuff in there. It's got videos of like outer space. It's got some really cool stuff. But then it's got some really cute like... I say little kid stuff, but people of all ages could like enjoy Sesame, it. You know? Sesame Street things. And... Really more just like, it's got these really cute like little sailboats with like teddy bears kind of going around. Stuff you'd see like on a little crib mobile kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. but like with really relaxing music. Any, and... any, any tropical islands? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and like streams in the woods and you can like... Oh. Hawaii. Yeah, so nice. I love that. Yeah, that and the best one. oceans and seagulls and. No, because sometimes I. You sometimes, guys need to come down. Sometimes at night, like uh, I'm listening to like um, the the ocean if I go to sleep or you know that kind of thing. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's got some great stuff. Well, um, we would uh, definitely like to thank. Um, Heather Slayton of Washington County Mental Health. Um, can you give us the address, please, where people can address and phone number? Yes. We are at 23 Summer Street in Barrie, and mm -hmm. the phone number is 479-4055. Okay. We would like to thank um, Washington County uh, <clears throat> Mental Health for sponsoring um, Able Done On Air and uh, for helping us with this topic. Um, we would also like to thank our other sponsors, um, Green Mountain Support Services, um, again, Washington County Mental Health, and many others, including um, the Muslim Media Corporation and um, uh, other partners such as the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Again, thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Lit on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Able Lynn On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, 
Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Able Din on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Able Din on Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences Boston, New England, Chapter.